Morning. Hey. Good. So it doesn't look like the t-shirts have come yet. Okay. That's all right. Well, I'm just wanting to make sure that they get there. So let me know. Yeah, uh, I will. For sure. That'll be fun. Yep. Yep. Oh, you're such an is initiator. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I keep trying to tame myself down. I got to stop. <laughs> well, but it's 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 a good flow. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a, a nour nourishing, innovative flow that I admire. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I've got to start working a little stronger on the soil piece here in town. On, on what? Oh, the local? Yeah, the soil re rejuvenation. What's, uh, what's the problem? Uh, Go, go and the ahead. project is to try and get the city to um, institutionalize soil remediation as part of their waterwise program. Initiate what? Um, soil remediation. Is that making soil better? Is that yeah. making more soil? Yeah, yeah. Re remediation, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've got a, a lot of people are sort of interested, but we haven't come together to decide to do stuff. So that's the next step. And I found a wonderful um, program, I think, to help us um, track it in a in a public way that pe where people can see what's happening. Uh, it's it's called OnePlanet.com. And he's got a very sophisticated um, mapping program that can be used for lots of things. So I'm hoping this will be one thing and it will encourage the city to start to use it. Um, we're getting a, a new mayor, I suspect, in January. <clears throat> and if that happens, we'll have a chance to to really shift how the city works internally. And this tool would be really helpful because the departments could then see what people are doing and where they're connected, where they're working on the same project, but may not know it. I I want to suggest when you talk about this to people and you say so soil remediation, add right behind that, getting our getting our hands in the dirt, I, I, enriching soil you know, on our yeah. own. Well, <laughs> Make it a two or three sentence, you know, two or three thought com combination because soil rem remediation keeps us in our head. Okay. Yeah, it's it's actually part of saving the aquifer, which is why the water saving program is a good fit. Because in order to get water back into the aquifer, it has to go down through the dirt. And it doesn't go down unless the dirt is um, healthy. If it's living, then it will absorb the water and keep it and hold it, and it will percolate down. If it's dead, then it just runs off and it goes in back into the river. Okay, let's start at the top of 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 of, of the sentence. What you were saying? What's an aquifer? You don't know? No. Okay, so an aquifer is a reservoir of water that's under the ground, and this one's huge. It's thousands of miles long. Um, oh my, so it's right. I mean, I, I'm aware of water underground, but well, I didn't and, know it was called an aquifer. Yeah, and there are a number of aquifers in our country and in other countries as well. And it's where a lot of people are getting water to the point that the earth has shifted a 34% shift because of the weight of water being removed from aquifers being put back into the ocean by people using it. And so toilets and faucets and that kind of thing drains the water <clears throat> from the earth and it ends up in the ocean. Yes, because we can't put things back into the aquifer. It's not available. It's under the ground. 
So the water has to go through the ground to get back into it. Now, sometimes like the Spokane River takes water from the aquifer at one point and puts it back at another because of the way the river and aquifer are designed ge geologically. But mostly uh, water to go back into the aquifer has to come down through. So it's a millions of years process. This water was built up over millions of years. And the fact that we're using it now makes it really hard to replace. <laughs> it, it makes it what? Hard to replace. Right. <laughs> because we can't put it back. So we're we're it's a finite resource that we're not taking care of and we're not using responsibly and all that stuff. Is um, that water to stay in the ground? What what help help me? I mean, educate me, please. I mean, what, what water water in the ground is an aquifer right and it's a natural process and it helps keep everything in balance and <clears throat> right but when people start taking water out of the ground and eventually goes to the ocean because everything we do is exterior you know right um say more because i'm i'm still learning <clears throat> well when we drink, when we dig wells, it can go into an underground river or it can go into the aquifer. And if it goes into the aquifer, then it's really very sweet, wonderful, clear water. Um, and Spokane has some of the best water in the world. They don't add much to it. They don't put much chlorine in it or anything because it's so clean when it comes out of the aquifer. But we're also the seventh largest city in the nation to use water. And we're tiny. We're not that big. We're 200 people, 200,000 people. So we're using a lot of water for no real reason. And most of it is on grass. Oh, shit. You know, so, you know, parks, um, uh, golf courses. That, and that's a public, that, that's a public service announcement thing that oh. that that's a focus to change things not well and that's what the water wise program is designed to do what's but it it's water wise what is but, that a, a city initiative yes yeah okay. but they're asking people to tear out their lawns so that they don't water them and that that would be saving water well it does but it doesn't do anything for the dirt that's left and we still get rain and the rain still washes off that land and back into the, into the river. So the idea would be to have the, the, even if you remove the grass or even if you don't, if you make the soil that you have control of living so that it will accept and hold the water, then you're allowing water to go into the aquifer you're keeping your plants and trees alive because the water is held in the soil for a longer period of time so it can withstand drought. And because everything's damp, you're also minimizing the risk of fire. So it has these huge benefits. And the idea is to roll that concept out from just lawns into some of the light agricultural processes around that they should pay more attention to feeding the soil than they do. It helps their crops. It helps everything. So to make people more conscious of the need for living soil and to do what they can to make that soil healthy serves everything and helps mitigate all of the issues that we're facing. It mitigates flooding too, because the water can be can stay instead of being washed off, which creates flooding. Are you on the city council yet? <laughs> I ran in 2016 and lost. <laughs> are you engaged with people who are? Who are you? Who are you sharing your your knowledge, information, and ideas with? Well, I'm trying to create a coalition of people who are already interested in the land, and people who are already interested in um, managing waste because composting is a part of this. And that's waste management. 
and then people who are interested in just gardening and that kind of stuff and see if we can create a number of people who would petition the city to do this because the city departments that I've talked to are fine with it, but they they need somebody from above to tell them that it's okay and to allow them to spend the money that they're gonna need to do this. So I'm also hoping to engage some of the local nonprofits to help support the marketing that's gonna be needed for this as part of it. So I'm trying to create a coalition of folks that would, would support it. How are you sharing your understanding and knowledge of how it all works? Well, a lot of people actually know this. Okay. This isn't new information. Um, the public doesn't know it. And so right. that's where the education would come and where the need for for publicity and all that kind of stuff. Right. I mean, the the waste program that we have here is really not a waste program. Um, we have a green bin, which goes to compost, and that's good. And then everything else really gets burned. There's, there's a recycling program, but that doesn't really recycle a lot of stuff. Um, it's amazing, actually, how little it actually recycles because they can't. They All, all the caps <clears throat> that are plastic get burned. Um, anything that's smaller than a, a three by five card gets burned because um, this machinery can't handle it. All of the light plastic, plastic film, plastic bags, all that kind of stuff. Um, supermarkets do that. <laughs> the city doesn't. So there's just a lot of stuff that actually gets burned that doesn't get recycled at all because it's just not um, economically feasible to do. So the, and that's a waste too. I mean, burning doesn't do anything for the planet. It, it takes that resource and puts it in the air basically, or in ash, but it doesn't really make it reusable. So it's, it's depleting the earth too. So it's really not a wonderful recycling program. Um, but the first thing I think really is to get people much more conscious about how we can impact the life around us and that we do have a lot of control around that. And if we can just take that seriously, I think the other things will come. Bartech, which is the company that gets all of the green bin stuff and does the major recycling. And then they sell their product as compost to other places. They're willing to actually give back some of that to the city. And they tried it a year ago and it was tied to green bin use. So if you have a green bin, you can get the compost. So the idea was people would sign up for green bins to get compost and that didn't go very far. <laughs> so I'm hoping to take it out of that conversation into this one and they may get a green bin too, that could happen, but it would, it would um, really engage Bartek in being a supplier back to the city of the green that's taken out of the city. Um, which would, I think, be a good thing. Um, and they're willing to to look at that. So there's pieces, but they still haven't come together yet. Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> I would enjoy having just a session with you to hear what you have to say about it and what questions come up in me that might help define and connect. Okay. And, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm okay. Robert. Hello. Yeah. Oh, so Robert's got his shirt on. Well, oh, so and so still got a sticker on it. <laughs> so stand up so we can see. This one is labeled as A. Oh, nice. There you go. So oh, that's very nice. It's a nice shirt. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Bridge to partnership. I've, I've been thinking about that. That's that's really nice. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd like the bright green. Very good. Yeah. How so are I, you? How I are you? I put a store on the network too, Robert. What's that? I put a store on the network so other people can buy it. Good. Good for you. And, and Ani's book is there. Oh, okay. So there's a link to her book. 
and mm -hmm. a link to my book on Amazon. So if you've got something. Any, any, any money that comes for that book is yours. Oh, well, I think it will go through Amazon. So you'll get it. Right. Well, I'll yeah. keep back. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and, and do it back to you. Okay. Well, don't, yeah. I don't, I, I don't think it's going to be uh, oodles and oodles, but well, you never know. <laughs> Bro, it would cost you, it, the stamps cost more. I mean, <laughs> never mind. Yeah, I, I've been actually selling books on Amazon, but you know, life makes changes. And so the way it was initially set up, the bank it went to, all of that, I don't have anymore. And so Amazon has been just cheerfully keeping that money. <laughs> And I haven't figured out how to re redo all that stuff yet. I haven't really done it. Um, but I did meet a person here on a committee who went, oh, you wrote the book I bought. That was just, whoa. <laughs> That's <amazing. laughs> A real person bought it, read it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many I've sold. I've not really kept track of that at all. And I don't know. Yeah, I, may, I imagine it's all there if I just dig far enough, but I haven't yet. And that certainly hasn't been like tons. Okay, Robert, let's hear your check in. How are you this morning? Uh, well, it's very well. Very well, in fact. But um, I don't have anything to say about recycling. Not really connected with that here. Um, that's quite a story, and I there are people in this area telling that story. And it starts anywhere from uh, recognition of the native populations that we stole it from, this, this yeah. land that we call Atlanta, <laughs> um, you know, and trying to educate people as to which, where the tribal lands were, where they overlapped, you know, what were the important features of the landscape to these yeah. um, indigenous peoples. Um, then there's Trees Atlanta, which is going around selling, uh, not just, I mean, they, they, they do sell trees, you know, um, for people to buy and plant on their property, but they also plant all kinds of trees around the city, you know, within the cityscape. Um, and they're the best go-to source. Mm -hmm. um, there are others who talk about, you know, the, um, you know, the the drainage basin. You know, where do we get our water? Well, it's actually quite large, and at least presently, you know, forty and forty to 50, sixty inches of rain a year. So. Oh. It, we actually have a lot of water right now. Um, the uh, then the recycling. I mean, we we have a good system in place. It's just we get reports from time to time. We we have blue boxes. Mm -hmm. um, we, yeah, we do for recycling. Yeah, um, we well, don't. What do is that called? Well, it's it's just a blue container. That's that's for the recycling, and then the green is for the trash. Right, we have that. Oh, we have brown for trash, and green is for green stuff. Yeah, and um, yeah, you know, it's just you get dis disheartening reports all the time of you know how how little is actually being recycled, and you know updates that this. <laughs> This, which was recyclable, is no longer. I mean, glass went out some time ago. Yeah. yeah. Although yeah. there's there's still glass drop-offs. Um, one uh, financed by the city, uh, you know, it's at one of the city parks um, for glass. And then we have the, um, my Terry, my wife, is down at the DeKalb, um, I mean, yeah, the Cab Family Farmers Market, which is this huge enterprise that this guy began. I mean, we buy all our food there. Oh, wonderful! 
Uh, I mean, it's, it's an incredible place. He has glass pickup as well. Um, yeah. And he does other things, but since those are done by the county, he does, th that isn't huge. Um, you know, there there's a fair amount of understanding about it, but then a lot of people simply don't care. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they will tell you so. They will puff out their chests and say, freedom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's <laughs> wow. Yeah, there, there's a lot of that attitude here in the South. Of you know, you don't know, tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to do, and over my dead body, will you, will you push that? Will the government, government, you know, push that, you know, right. policy and make me, you know, comply? Yeah. Yeah, Regan was the one who started making the government the bad guy. Yeah, and it's just, yeah. it it's, yeah. it's amazing to me how little continuity there is, um, you know, in sort of, I've, I've been thinking about, you know, levels of consciousness. Like, consciousness is shared by us all. However, you know, the tuning mechanism is very, you know, is such that <laughs> it's very different in different people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a lot that we all accept. You know, um, it could be argued that the basic that we see each other, that this this computer is actually working and we're seeing each other on screen is an agreement. It's 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 a shared agreement in what we're perceiving. So that's that's part of the consciousness. It is. It is. There's a yeah. huge mass of it. it. It's like most of the most of the iceberg we totally agree to, we, we totally agree with, you know, colors in general. I mean, sure there there are vibrations that vary, but we see it in a similar way. We recognize other renditions of it. It's I mean that's shared with animals even. I mean it's it's um there's a lot that's shared in terms of this total body of consciousness. So I've, the reason I'm going into this, this isn't aimless, because um, I looked at Ani, I, I looked at your uh, comment that came just before the link came for today's session. And um, you know, I, was, I was thinking about how individually we have such things as you know an insight a window into the the conscious you know but together it gets expanded together we 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 add to this we um embellish so to speak and the reason i've been thinking about it all week is very very powerful for me um I started reading a book that I had never read, which was Dharma Bums by Jack Kerouac. And, you know, I, I I used to carry on the road around with me for quite a while. I mean, it was sort of like in my 20s, early 20s, late teens, it was sort of like a Bible. What's the book called? Um, that was On the Road by Jack Kerouac. And then Dharma Bums, I'd always known about, but had never read. And I just yeah. read it. And it was amazing to me. I mean, I was totally flabbergasted that after well, he wrote it 65 years ago. Um, amazing. I remember when it came 19, out. 1956 uh, wow. was when he wrote it. And um, 1970, I experienced California almost exactly the way he wrote it, wrote about it. So it was still a prevalent, you know, um, worldview, you might say. And what's the author's name? Jack Kerouac. Kerouac? Uh, K Kerouac. And yet that has totally disappeared now. Yeah. That, that sense of California is yeah. gone. 
Oh, it still has a reputation, but I don't think it exists. Yeah, it does I don't think it exists. I mean, yeah. you go to Mount Tamalpais, uh, you know, it, it was it was sort of a mecca. Yeah, it yeah. still is for some people. Yeah, nineties. Yeah, but the way you know people would share things, you 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 picnic in the park, you just join them, and they would. Yeah. You, food it could be trusted you know nobody's trying to yeah. slip something that was going to kill you i mean it was just an amazing um it, it was a way of life and um which i thought was gone and so it was just sort of surprising to find it in in doing in reading this this book i took it out of the library and um it just had me thinking all week, you know, what is the truth of anything? It just is totally in flux. And then you gotta, then you gotta think of Edward Bernays, who was, you know, the, this, um, this fellow in the twenties, well, teens, twenties, 19 teens and twenties, who was, into uh developing modes you know the, the let's just say the means of 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 advertising you know of and he called it propaganda at the time it was sort of all inclusive and his famous comment goes something like you know give me the give me full access to the use of you know, the mass media of the time, which didn't even include TV and definitely not the internet. Um, and, you know, he said, give me one month and I can control public opinion, mass public opinion, about as accurately as when I'm driving my car with a steering wheel and an accelerator and brakes. He, he predicted that kind of pre precision. And of course he was hired up by all these big companies. I mean, he was a big deal in the thirties. And um, I began to realize just how much every, all this truth has been manufactured. So yeah. what do we, how do we work against that. I mean, how does that really work? You know, what you were describing when I came on, Catherine, you know, it's true to you. How do you tell people who don't think it's no. true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how you can tell people who don't think it's true because people have the ability, that's what autopoiesis is a part of it anyway, is that you create what you see and understand. So if you don't have the eyes to see, it's simply invisible to you. It's not part of your make making um, repertoire of things. So that's where education comes in, is to help people do that. And, and that's been part of my frustration just with the right in general, is that to, to re-explain their world, you have to go back so far because there's been so much built up on this illusion that they've created that it's unpacking the whole thing. You can't just come in at a point and say, this is different because it doesn't compute with the rest of what they know. So it's hard for them to see. You have to unpack the whole thing. And that's just a lot of work. <laughs> so, so we don't really have any more such a thing as cumulative knowledge. It's that it's basically you start from the beginning every all the time. Yeah, yeah. You have to backtrack in order to get back to what was true. What is shared? Yeah. What is yeah. what is shared from us from a more a broader base? Of yeah. I mean, in yeah. other words, the is shared from the scientific method. You know, means of the scientific method. Or you could say what is shared in terms of the the, the Christian faith method. Uh, you know, I mean, you have to go back to that kind of, of um, yeah. reservoir of consciousness that's agreed upon. And, um, you know, when those are in distinct contradiction to one another, I mean, it, it 
seems to me it automatically leads to the mess we're in right now. Well, that's why I go back to the earth. Yeah. I, just because it, I mean, you can see it, you know, you don't have to explain it. If they are willing to engage with it, it's right there. It's, and it's a very shared thing. It's you, you can't plant a seed and get a tree. You plant a seed, it grows, takes time. Those are things that you can actually experience. <laughs> So it gets out of that kind of stuff. It's, and it's um, continuously um, validated. Yeah. Validated through through uh, being able to re reproduce the results, you know, yeah. with yeah. ease. And um, yeah. it seems like we're losing that kind of thread. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. So going back to the, going back to the earth, is to me like going back to my gut because it's my inner vibrational coherence it's my soul it's it's something something my vibrational core it's like i have a i have a truth meter in my soul in my gut in my vibrational body and I pay attention to that. I remember when COVID hit, I was, it's like, yes, because it drove us into isolation, which means driving us into reflection, which means paying attention to the unfolding now moment, being in touch with the unfolding now moment. And it's only in that state of being that uh, it's a truth meter. Yeah. You know, we are a truth meter vibrationally. And yep. and whatever this this is that we are, which is Earth, you know, we're a truth meter. And if we pay attention as we develop our capacity to be a truth meter vibrationally we we know we can tell there's no question yeah 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 but we don't trust ourselves and so we get caught in our minds and then we look for validation with other minds to think the way well, same that, way we that, do yeah that's the loop that that we have to yeah. check you know that's exactly into exactly. our bodies our souls will help change that because yeah. our minds are helpless when it yeah. comes to discerning truth <laughs> <laughs> i like that <laughs> our minds are helpless in discerning truth yes yeah yes well our mental you mean our our mental capacity in terms of what we think of as our ability to think right. but there's a vast range to what our mind is and i think certain percent certain percentage of our mind is very very capable of discerning the truth of picking it up um but we're we're distracted we're not paying attention to that part of our yeah mental capacity yeah i mean to me I, that's the danger and in, in the worst danger in terms of the cell phone craze you know this um it's 24 hour <laughs> distraction yeah it's entertainment man yeah you can, yeah yeah you can find I, something I, there i had a really good time last night writing this deep dive introduction it, it was a it was an experience it, it was a bodily experience yeah. Um, as observers, listeners, questioners, contributors, explorers, and space holders together, we often attune to a greater collective clarity and vibrational coherence. We do have capacity to discern truth. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's very nice. If 
felt really, it feels good. We, we experience vibrational coherence. We just don't label it and bring attention to it. And we can tell, you, you, you can tell when you can, our bodies know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're earth. Yeah. There's something real and vibrational. El elemental. Yeah, and my cat picks it up. I mean, she'll just sit there and suddenly turn and look at me in the eyes and just sit, sit there with like these big goggle eyes just looking into my eyes and will stay that way for, you know, several minutes. Hmm. I mean, there's absolute connection. It makes a lot of sense out of the current craze on um, some of the TikTok videos i keep track of them because they really do give a sense of what people are playing with in terms of their consciousness but there's a there's a big there's a thread a strong thread of showing animals with with unusual friends hap, you know partners yeah. yeah you know so like a duck and a and a dog you know yeah. huddling yeah. up together and following each other all around or there's this, one, the dog. there's this one where the door a dog is is just walking in through this you know the the very shallow surf with a hammer small hammerhead shark shark you know a sand shark not yeah. hammer, but a sand shark and the dog i mean the sand shark isn't trying to get away so that's how it's showing but the dog is just absolutely focused on the shark and just walking along with it for however long the video followed i mean it's like wow and they do fish and birds and you know i mean so it so it's so it's not just the furry friends you know the the monkey sitting on top of say a elephant's back um you know it goes across almost all moving forms of life live <laughs> Yeah. I haven't, I don't know if anyone's tried to show that this kind of connection might occur among plants, but um, I guess it's just different because there's certain people, certainly people who love their plants. Yeah. 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 And uh, everything of substance is elemental, yeah. is earth, is family, is yeah. relational. And this and this is shown on some. I mean, I love these these little videos because they show it. They absolutely show it. Um, I've only read about plant plant connections with with uh, living with other animals or with plant to plant, but I've read about that a lot. It's not deeply etched in my experience. Yeah, I haven't read much about plant across species engagement at all um I, so i'm curious if you have those resources it'd be very interesting well, i've just seen it as anecdotes i mean none of it's science i mean <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't exist <laughs> yeah i i i know that plants respond to us yeah so uh, I mean, they do. I mean, I have a relationship with a little plant sitting here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember when you bought that. Isn't it oh. lovely? <laughs> oh, look at that. It's grown a lot. Yes. Yeah, it it's doing very well. Yeah. 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 It, it, it must love you. <laughs> it does. It, it takes in our vibes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And 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 whatever energy comes from me toward it, it picks up. Yeah, because I love it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I admire it. Yeah, yeah. I've got some blackberry bushes that um, 
our, our neighbor had sort of planted spot planted them all over the garden in one area in the garden just here and there and never really took care of them so they were these spindly i mean after years they've been there 10 years and they're just these spindly little things so i dug them all up six of them i built a trellis you know and put wires hanging wires and and um you know threaded them through the wire so they could climb and th there's no fruits because you know it was I, I did it this this spring so only only a couple of berries actually set but these vines it's just crazy it just went wild it's this wonderful thing it's almost com it's 10 feet by 10 by eight feet high and it's just filled with vine i'd love for you to take a picture of that and send it to us yeah i mean i could do that i i you know i hadn't given it too much thought i was thinking oh well we've been watering them for one thing but i began to realize there just it, there really is something very <laughs> that's why it's like, nature doesn't want to yeah nature doesn't want to be wild it, it wants to be engaged yeah not left alone but to be inter interacted with and that interaction is what really is generative i mean that's why the the native americans had such brilliant landscapes because they were engaged with them they didn't just leave them they engaged with them oh we love you we want more of you and and plants respond to that if you talk to people in the hemp trade Oh, they can, I mean, they've done amazing things with hemp plants. They respond really fast. As long as they know what you want, man, they'll produce more of that, whatever it is. And so it's gotten to be a lot stronger. They produce quicker, all of those things in just a few short years. Yeah. Plants are very responsive if they know what you want. <laughs> it's all alive. Yeah. Well, what yeah. is the the ba ba? The the pioneers theme. It's all, it's all natural. It's all alive. It's all they they've they've got three or four things that they say, but it is. It's all alive. It, yeah. it, it's all. It's all alive. <laughs> yeah, the pioneers is finally are finally doing classes. It's taken them a long time, but they finally have a learning center now where you can go and take classes on all sorts of things. I know. They have courses on water and all sorts of stuff. I I wanted to do the one on plants and it's $170. Well, there's that. Yeah, they do charge for stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, you kind of got to. Yeah, I do think they they do offer um, some scholarships. I know, so you can apply. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So everything is elemental. I mean, we're everything of substance is elemental. Is earth? Is vibration it's, the same? It, but it's also in relationship. So that's what I wanted to 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 ask you Robert when you're talking about different levels of consciousness how do you see relationship in that because I've been really noodling around right relationship and what that actually means well um, I mean it's nothing to say being in right relationship but what does that consist very of very interesting thing happened yesterday um there's this one group that we just meet kind of like this only just very different um people and um like some of these folks are into, and I think I've mentioned this before, you know, they're 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 into ascended masters and you know, these space um galax galactic forces fighting one another and so forth. And so yesterday, you know, I just sort of sat back as people started talking about this guy named David Hawkins. And um he he's he's written some books power versus force yeah and the book has very different 
you know, people's re re reactions to it. Some of them love it. Some of them say, you know, it's a whole lot of hocus. And um, what I was listening, hearing, was that this was all focused on bettering one's human intellect or one's human performance, not yeah, just vibration, intelligence, but all of it, vibrational, physical, you know. And a very interesting thing started happening about after 45 minutes or so. I can't remember what the transition was, but we started talking about um, loving one another. I mean, that's the way I summed it up. You know, you know, this proclamation, thou shalt love one another. What does that mean? And um, but we started talking about that. Of be, I know what it, what what was the transition was. One of the fellas, is a German guy was talking about a friend of his who had a, a um, you know, and we were talking about forgiveness. And this, this guy had a boss who was a pain in the neck. And his form of forgiveness was to start praying for this fellow, you know, to do better. And, you know, and then a week later, you know, total change. So we got off on that. And we began to realize that, um, there isn't anything but relationship. Yeah. You know, as different as we may be, it's only to the point where we interchange with one another. In other words, one of the reasons this deep dive works is you're reflecting me, which induces greater understanding and insight in myself. <clears throat> I'm reflecting each one of you individually together, but individually. Mm -hmm. And it's a chain reaction and cumulative. Yeah. And um, and I think that, you know, it starts to put a whole new light, shine a whole new light on, you know, this, this, the, well, it's virtually every religion. It's not just Christian, you know, to, that do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Um, sure, that describes, you know, reciprocity. It describes, you know, karma. It's also just the way to love one another. <laughs> you know, it's also the way to forgive. It's also the way toward gratitude, actually, mm -hmm. um, because gra gratitude is sort of you're reaching this area where everything is reciprocal and easily so if you're all in gratitude you know what i mean i'm just spinning stuff now but um i th i think that there is a human there's a way for human beings to rise to that getting out of their own heads and thinking that they're a separate being yeah yeah and this guy hawkins i mean i, I looked over some of his research um, but it just came down to why spend that much time trying to elevate yourself when really you'll be elevated very quickly if you simply sit down with other people and truly give them your attention. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, you know, what they say is what you attend to is what you love. So um, you're giving them your love. <laughs> yeah, that's a roomie. <laughs> right yeah it's a, so, it's a you know i mean this this business is a whole lot simpler than i ever thought it was <laughs> that's the funny part about it yeah yeah i mean you can't write 600 pages in a book on this stuff it's just too simple <laughs> <laughs> uh, unless you just tell stories you know and anecdotes about how, how it worked here and how it worked there that's a good one it's a good way to <laughs> I I have come to a simple understanding and experience of loving myself is what help is it 
only I can't loving myself enables me to love other people. Mm -hmm. the, the attention that I give to myself, to my body, to it's like this is the first one that I that I I love. And when I loved this one, everything in me is geared toward giving that kind of loving attention to everybody else, to, to, to anybody else. Mm. I mean, it, I, it's proven, I've proven it to myself. Yeah. But, but there is a question behind this. Which came first? Loving yourself? or actually, uh, you know, giving your loving attention to other people. Loving myself. Because for me, I've given this a lot of thought. And it appears to me that the way I came to loving myself was because I began giving other people enough of my loving attention that what got reflected back to me of myself was something I thought, oh, yeah, I can um, trust that. I can love that. So it's an open yeah. question. I'm not saying either way, but... Um, it's reciprocity. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, maybe yeah. they just go together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, that's how self-creating works. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how can we for lack of better words, package that, <laughs> share it, and promote it. Let's, yeah. we, better, we better talk to Edward Bernays. He, he'd be able to tell you. Yeah. I don't know who that yeah. is. That was the one I was talking about, the, the master of propaganda. Market. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that, what was, there was a book in the 90s, too, that talked about the social media um, I can't remember. It was a really big deal as because he did the same kind of thing, talking about how the media creates worlds and how easy it's manipulated and all that. Um, yeah, wow. it's true. Yeah, the, you know the the. It really pains me when I see how people disrespect the trust that others have that they use it as a manipulative tool instead of valuing it it becomes something they can play with um, oh well they're just going to believe anything so i can tell them anything instead of really honoring the the gift that that trust is um, i think that's one of the the source of that distrust is the relationship with self is is from the relationship with self yeah yeah no i wouldn't argue with you at all yeah 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 i mean these, that's that's where compassion comes in for me because it's broken people who do broken things and they don't um they have to do their own healing to really get it and to understand it and i was on a call the other day with a guy who's in my view very opinionated he feels he's very open um and he was talking about how you have to listen to people who say the weirdest things with openness and not have any judgment about it he says because it takes you into interesting places and you hear interesting stories but he is not at all open to changing his mind <laughs> he doesn't really believe that but he doesn't want to make it known that he doesn't believe it and he doesn't want to devalue somebody else's experience because he doesn't believe it um but he doesn't believe it <laughs> and it was just so interesting to watch him um because he uh, he was making this fervent plea for people to be open and non-judgmental but he wasn't willing to say you might actually learn something and change your mind he couldn't go there <laughs> with it that that next step because you've got to keep your mind and let their mind and you keep them separate but you allow them to have their mind you know but you don't have to engage um and it was just so interesting to see just so interesting to see yeah yeah i 
there's that's a, something that's a very real trap yeah yeah um, yeah you know with without realizing you know just how protective you're being exactly exactly he's a psychiatrist <laughs> he has a built-in capacity to you know hold things in boxes Disassociate. yes yeah 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 it's just so interesting because there that's i mean that's for me the path of the heart is that you can feel these different things and and the trust that you have on yourself allows you to trust the, the truth of the other. Yeah. And, and that means you can go there even, and that's transformative. I mean, that's what changes you is to see somebody else's truth and recognize it for what it is and, and know that it is, you know, different from, it was different from yours, but if, if it is a truth, it can be yours too and be able to, to make that shift. Yeah, it is dangerous. I mean, I have, I had an an experience with some guy. We spent the whole night. This was in Seattle. We spent the whole night talking about you know ghosts and and his and projection. Uh, you know, he he was talking about Carlos Cast Castaneda. After a mm -hmm. while, I said he could do these things. And he would project himself and so forth. Yeah. And um, it was fascinating. And I absolutely, I mean, I'm gullible as could be, have been all my life. <laughs> you know, what stopped it was I got home. I was, went down to, back home to Eugene. And um, I don't know, a couple of weeks later, I got this inkling to, to draw a... Um, to draw a, you know, he's like my new best friend sort of thing, I, you know, to draw a, um, a a picture of him. And there was this cowling over him and it was dark. <laughs> I never sent it to him. And that that's when <laughs> I realized there was something there that I could not touch, you know. So it, well, sometimes, yeah. You do, you know. I could have built that up to to never. Oh, I'll never do that again. You know. Um, or you can build. You can assess that experience as you know. This is this open heartedness is can lead to really perhaps dangerous stuff. So you have to be aware and yeah. careful. Yeah, um, it makes all the difference all the difference in that kind of stuff and it's so subtle that that's that's why the spiritual teachers always make their students do all this work for self-purification because you've got to get all that crap out of you if you don't get that crap out of you you can have the powers you can get the the, the skills to do stuff but that it gets warped it gets warped by those other emotions that are still in you those misunderstandings where you're still separate from life <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah yep it takes a lot of work to to clear that and when you're in, it's like being in a an air tunnel you know if you're not if if what's in there is not absolutely pristine just a little speck of something will blow it off course really easily because that the power of the air is reflected off of that. It has to be immaculate in order to be able to stay on course in an air tunnel. So the stronger the force, the more immaculate it needs to be because any imperfections are magnified. Yeah, and it's the same with us. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm following the analogy, but I don't know what an air tunnel is. I don't either. Oh, it's it's a, a big tunnel that has lots of air in it and they they um use it to understand uh, aerodynamics for airplanes and that kind of stuff so they can actually see how their design is going to work under the force of being out in nature and all of that in a controlled environment um, and it doesn't take much to make it a mess yeah so you have to be really pristine and it's exactly the same because those are the forces we're working with i mean as you get closer to life the forces are tremendous just tremendous I mean, just think of what life creates. So, yeah, it doesn't take much to deflect it off into something. Yeah. 
some somehow trust trusting self is at the core yep of all of that because i learned that i couldn't trust a damn thing i couldn't trust anybody anybody anything until i i totally trusted myself until the relation and 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 of course you can't trust yourself if you got all this shit in there and and you're trying to hold on to your positional thing no no yeah, you gotta pull that up. clear slate pure of heart whatever clear mind trusting self i can't i have to trust I can't trust without, I can't trust anything. Well, there's, there's trust and blind faith. Huh? I said, there's trust and blind faith. And we, we default to blind faith a lot mm -hmm. by making assumptions instead of actually being willing to test and question. And if you can't test and question, it's not really trust. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, that's, Part of the engagement that people who have built up these fantasy worlds really resist. I mean, that's why it's so hard to talk to the far right. Because if you actually want to talk to them, they have to get out of this stuff. And that's, they don't trust that they can answer those things. They know they have an answer over here in the script. It's answered. So you stay in the script. We can do that. But we can't talk because I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I need to have that script, um, and and it it really shows that up, and that's just really scary for folks. Yeah, I mean, it, I found that to be true of uh, top executives, corporate yes. executives, and and uh, yeah, college professors and proselytizers I mean, of any kind. And it isn't just the yeah. MAGA people. Yeah. I get the MAGA people, at least ones I, maybe I've only met some, ex, you know, extraordinary people, but few of them, you know, as long as we didn't talk politics, we I would be amazed by the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I've found that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, you but, but then again, he, this fellow, and one I'm thinking of, you know, he had the wherewithal to not to to realize that we could agree to to disagree. Yeah, I mean, because that's a good a good sign. If 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 they can't make that agreement, then you don't want to listen to them anyway. There's nothing there to be shared. I well, would... well, there's there's this this um mind training too, though that goes on with some of that. And and that really saps all of that. It just sidetracks all of that. They, they get into a programmed response. And I've seen that. And it's really, really scary because they can go from being really nice to being totally horrible in just a few words will trigger that. And they're in a whole different space. It's like they're hypnotized in a certain kind of way. I mean, I think that's what happened in Rwanda and other places where people have just suddenly gone crazy against their friends. Um, and just caught in this thing, yeah. Yeah, and I see that. I see that here too. I've experienced it actually. Yeah, I, a friend played another friend against me, and just programmed that. And I saw it happen, so I knew it. I knew what he was doing, and I was just not going to play the game. <laughs> yeah. What's coming? What's coming up in me right now? is my work as a juvenile probation officer oh. and, and an aftercare, what's called an aftercare worker where uh, girls were incarcerated, children in need of supervision and, and you know, doing bad stuff on my caseload, 80 some girls on my caseload. Oh. And talk about trust. <laughs> it's like I was in a like a I don't even know what to call it, some kind of a purification chamber in relationship with them. 
to clarify that I'm somebody you can trust. Yeah. I mean, it's like I was burned. I was just, you know, burned out of, I mean, it was a, a clarifying chamber to, to find the gold, the trust inside of me that, that I was trustworthy with them. That was such a wonderful experience to be to be put through that because they they wouldn't do shit without trusting me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm grateful for that. How long would how long did you do that job? Five years. Yeah. In, in Baltimore, I, 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 I work for the D Department of Juvenile Services in Baltimore. Yeah. Yeah, I did a little work in that area, but not a lot. It, it was, it was so dynamic. And even when I had to bring girls back to court who had been re released and got in tr trouble again or left home again or something, to maintain that trustworthy relationship with them while I was bringing them back to court. Because the relationship was everything. Mm -hmm. them, them having some semblance of trust that could could calm them, trust in me that could calm them. Yeah. Good to be able to share like this. Well, my wife just returned from the day, the shopping trip. I think I better go help her unload. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. say hi to Terry for us. I think we're we talk, we're demonstrating, you know, what it takes to um what should I say, create an open hearted response to other people is what actually creates that ability to connect. Yeah, to be trusted and to trust. Be trustworthy. Yeah. Okay, I will see you soon. Okay. I'll take this off, though. I don't want to get it filthy. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Yours should yours should be coming soon, honey. Good. Good. Yeah. I mean, if Robert's got his, they were mailed at the same time, so yours should come today or tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because George is farther away. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Santa Barbara has a little bit of a buffer around it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking post office. Yeah, I know. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's so nice to hear about your work, though. Yeah. Good to yeah. share. Yeah. Yeah, it's an intense, uh, intense place to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Janice Sawyer was first incarcerated when she was eight. I mean, I mean they had to lock her up. They, they had to put her in, you know, um, I don't know. And, and Rhonda Conway it was just wonderful to be the point person in somebody's life that in I mean, you know to to a to a girl in trouble you know to be the point person even though i was a court worker you know i i represented the court but i didn't <laughs> i didn't represent yeah. but, but um it was such a privilege 
to be that in intimately involved and re responsible for, I don't know, something I could find that would help give them some stability in which to grow. Yeah. And I realized the healing that that brought to me in my own childhood. Yeah. Which was difficult. Yeah. I'm just grateful. Yeah, we just need each other so desperately. Yeah. It makes such a difference when you connect with someone and know yeah. that somebody cares. It makes such a difference. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Bless you. Yeah, bless you. Yeah. I look forward to my shirt. Yes, yes, yes. Next week we can all wear our shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for all your help. Sure. Okay. Yeah, it's been fun hearing your comments on the web too. Oh, we didn't really talk about that but uh, on the introduction thing, but I like what you've done. So we'll noodle on that more so. Yeah. Whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 okay.